Probably now is a good time to take a look at some of the off-board artillery rules and how it works, how you call them in. Uh, in this case, where it turns six, the Americans, one of the first things they did is call in some off-board artillery. And they have one fire mission available. And each side has so many missions available. Uh, basically, you either have to have an observer or a headquarters that can actually see the target. And the target can be an enemy unit. It could be the edge of a piece of terrain, like the edge of a forest, or it could be the center of a terrain piece. Like in this case, what we have here, the Americans have called in a strike on this hill. There seems to be a lot of action during this battle. And there was quite a few units here. If you remember, there was a squad of infantry here, there was the medium machine gun here, there was the headquarters for the Germans, uh, and there was a mortar uh, section back here. Well, they called in the artillery strike, and the first thing you do is you roll for availability. And it's a 2d6 roll, and it's it's based on the, the army and the year of the conflict being represented, and that tells you what you need. Typically, it's a 7, 8, or 9, uh, depending on if it's of a general uh, fire mission or if it's a direct fire mission. Direct fire missions are like the most immediate uh, artillery assets available to your battle group, like battalion level guns. Uh, the gen the general, general uh, level of artillery support is more like the higher up divisional guns that might be available. A little harder to access those guns and bring them to bear here, but uh, you know, it's, not a, it's a chance. In this case, the Americans called in some direct support, which is the more available guns. Uh, the availability, they made it. Uh, they had to roll a 7 plus. They got it. After that, they make an accuracy roll to see how accurate it is. It could end up moving around the table and hitting your own troops. It could be going wild somewhere. It could totally uh, be right on the mark, like it was in this case, or perhaps even a direct hit. So direct that you actually can do extra damage. And that wasn't the case uh, here. As you can see, the hill's covered in explosions at the moment. It was a pretty accurate hit. And once you've decided where how accurate it was, or rolled to determine how accurate it was, you roll for fire for effect. And if we look at our table here, you can see what that chart looks like. Uh, and basically, it's another uh, 2d6 roll. Uh, you might have modifiers like the number of guns in the battery, and that applies to onboard artillery. This game has both. You can have both represented on table and off table. Off table, it's right here. You have direct fire missions right here, and you'll get a plus one on your 2d6 roll for fire for effect. A general fire mission, more powerful guns, is right here. You get a plus two added. In this case, we're going to add a plus one uh, to the 2d6 roll. The result is, I believe, a nine, and the target's under the template, and in this case, it's a four inch by eight inch template with the long edge lined up with this, the edge uh, that the Americans are coming on from. So it's kind of like Flames of War in that respect. Uh, it basically covered this entire area, even back here where it hit part of the mortar team. Uh, the net effect in this case, if we look at nine on this column here, was right here. Infantry and guns in open or cover this section, they have to make disengage tests. And that would be on the morale section of our chart here, where you everybody under the template will make those tests, in this case, disengage tests. And uh, it was quite devastating, if I remember. There was quite a few dispersals, which means removal from the table. And in fact, the Germans lost their Falschenjäger company headquarters. It's now gone. They also lost that squad that was a little bit forward and in the shrubs, and that's gone. Uh, the other two units, the medium machine gun, is now suppressed, but it's still holding its ground. And the mortar team also with, became suppressed. It actually disengaged and withdrew behind these hedges. Uh, so that's the result, folks. There's nothing else on this hill but a suppressed medium machine gun, as you can see. So very effective fire on the part of the Americans. Uh, and I should add that this takes the Falschenjäger breakpoint almost to its uh, max, 
let's see, they got one, two units wiped out, plus four, that's six in all, over there somewhere. Uh, Falsham Jaeger can afford to lose seven, so when they exceed that, when they exceed seven units broken, the Falsham Jaeger are gone. They're out of the battle, so they're that close, folks. And, of course, at the end of this turn, they're going to have to start making break tests as well to see if any of their units pull off the table anyway. So it's a pretty bad moment for the Falschenjäger. Uh, okay, folks, let's get back to the battle and see what else the Americans can do.